Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We got five big news stories for you today. We got some new stuff on Tears of the Kingdom. We got stuff on Switch 2 and more. But before we dive into it, I want to remind you that we are giving away a Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Nintendo Switch OLED edition. Pretty exciting. Then we're also giving away a collector's edition of the game and a pin from PAX East. So what are you waiting for? Head down to the pinned comment or the description to click on the link. We also have available for a limited time some special 100,000 subscriber t-shirts and posters. We have links to that down below as well. They're only going to be available for the next two weeks. All right, folks. So the first thing we have to talk about today is some brand new official footage for Tears of the Kingdom. And this comes courtesy of a fairly lengthy commercial out of Australia. In this commercial, it does show Link doing various things such as building, falling, failing at building, building again, swimming and failing at that, flying through the air, taking on a boss, Bokoblin and more. Honestly, it's a really cool, unique style of trailer meant for a more, I guess, up class style of life. I don't know if that's how things actually work in Australia, but hey, look, this commercial is pretty wholesome and just a lot of fun showing Zelda in a different light. Oftentimes we see Zelda being played by teenagers or by like friends and stuff like that. And here this is about just an individual who works really hard in his, you know, in his life, presumably. And then just, hey, you know what? I wind down my day playing some Zelda, whether it's on the train or the bus or at home, you know, after saying hi to the wife. And apparently it was a surprise because it was sort of indicated that maybe the wife bought it for him. Sort of ironic because, well, my fiance bought Tears of the Kingdom for me. So I guess I'm that guy. Maybe, except I don't live in Australia. Next up, we got to talk about Nintendo's next generation device because it has hit the news and there's some weird headlines going around that don't necessarily make any sense. So what happened was there was an investors meeting early this morning and Shintaro Furukawa mentioned that they are planning to sell 15 million new Nintendo Switch devices in the next year. Now, the problem with this is that something else is being reported to him that isn't actually from him and that is because Nick Kay put out a report right after the meeting that stated the following. To offset the Switch's decline and get back on the growth track, many are calling on the company to introduce a new console. One is rumored to be due out next year. Development seems to be progressing well, a source close to Nintendo told Nick Kay Asia, but a product launch won't happen before next spring at the earliest. Now, the important note about this is that this is what Nikkei Asia said. This isn't actually what Nintendo said last night. And we're seeing lots of headlines flying around saying, Furukawa said we're not getting a new Switch platform before April of 2020. That's not actually what Furukawa said. In fact, Furukawa, when asked about the hardware, pretty much danced around the question and just said, we have nothing to announce at this time. What a shocker. Nintendo's actual response doesn't match the report from Nikkei Asia. Of course, what is really, really cool is Nikkei Asia did note that it's actually progressing really, really well, this supposed hardware. They're basically talking to people in manufacturing. They're not talking directly to Nintendo. So take this for what it is. Uh, it's a story being a little bit misreported that has a smidge of truth to it. And reality is Nintendo never actually said it. But hey, that's just today's news for this. Next up, we have to talk about Nintendo's financial results in general that popped off last night. Now we have a lot of data to go over. So you know what, editor, roll the tape. All right, so the big news out of the way first, Nintendo did miss their second revised goal of 18 million switches for the last fiscal year, just barely selling 17.97 million. Their new goal of 15 million for this current fiscal year is you know, put out there. But here's the weird thing, Furukawa said directly he is not confident they are going to hit that goal and feels like they are going to be revising those numbers later this year but he admitted that switch is on a downturn trajectory and he isn't sure that he can turn it around he did emphasize however that even if they cross just 10 million units that this is unprecedented for a nintendo system in its seventh year so he's trying to give a positive spin on this and he's not technically wrong it doesn't sound great though either 125.62 million switches have been sold to date. 1,036,150,000 pieces of software have been sold. And this is Nintendo's first ever system to move over a billion in software. Now they did update their top 10 games as well. Mario 
A Cart 8 Deluxe is still number one at 53.79 million. Uh, million. Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons is number two at 42.21 million. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at 31.09 million. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, now this is just the Switch edition, at 29.81 million. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield at 25.82 million. Super Mario Odyssey at 25.76 million. Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet at 22.10 million. Super Mario Party at 19.14 million. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe is at 15.41 million. And Ring Fit Adventure rounds out that top 10 at 15.38 million. Now at the meeting, Nintendo reminded us of their upcoming slate of games. And beyond two of them, it's pretty slim pickings. So Tears of the Kingdom coming out on May 12th. Pikmin 4 coming out July 21st. Part 1 of the Pokemon DLC dropping in the fall with Part 2 in the winter. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's Wave 5 and 6 dropping sometime in 2023. And then Metroid Prime 4 as TBA. Yeah, that's a pretty slim pick and slate. Other sales updates on newer games included Bayonetta 3 selling 1,007,000 units. Or I think it's 1,070,000 units to be clear which is slightly ahead of Bayonetta 2 on Switch, which sold 1,040,000 units. Metroid Prime Remastered sold 1,090,000 units. Kirby Return to Dream Land Deluxe sold 1,460,000 units. Fire Emblem Engage sold 1,610,000 units. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is up to 1,860,000 units. Could end up crawling to 2 mil, we'll see. And Splatoon 3 is sitting at 10,670,000 units. Also, Super Mario Party All-Stars is now officially a 10 million seller, so congrats to that game as well. So when we just break all this down, overall these are some pretty good numbers, but Nintendo is heading into the great unknown. They have to transition to their next system soon, and bottom line is, Nintendo, we don't know what's happening. And speaking of not knowing what's happening, the next story doesn't sound great for Nintendo either, if these people are true. So some big game journalists put out there that a Nintendo Direct is not happening this June. The first one was Andy Robinson, where he talked about how PlayStation's planning to do an event in early June, along with Xbox's event on the 11th, but he hasn't heard anything from Nintendo. Next up, Jeff Grubb quote tweeted Andy Robinson and basically said the exact same thing. So it sounds like the journalists that usually give us the inside information on Nintendo's next events are saying we're not getting next events in June. That's really interesting. Nintendo chose not to participate in E3. That was one of the reasons E3 got canceled. But yeah, I don't know. I probably should remind you that Nintendo is going to be a Gamescom because clearly they got to have something before Gamescom because they got to have something to show at Gamescom. So maybe we are looking at a Direct in July instead. Maybe a Nintendo Direct in August, which is when Gamescom is actually happening. But yeah, it looks like Nintendo might not have their traditional June Direct. So I guess time will tell because Nintendo hasn't announced anything. Now for our last story, we have an update on Nintendo Live 2023 because this event is starting to become a little bit of a bigger deal than many initially anticipated. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one, the event's gonna be running from September 1st through September 4th. So we now have a date on that event. Beyond all of that, that's actually running alongside PAX West. And Nintendo announced they are looking into ways, although not official yet, to allow people with PAX West badges to actually attend Nintendo Live. It's they're literally happening like across the street from each other. That's just how close these events are together. So what's interesting about this is Nintendo again reminding people that there will be game demos at Nintendo Live. So you have to wonder if maybe Nintendo doesn't have a direct presence in PAX West because they're doing their own separate event, but they want people to come to them to play all the game demos. And remember, that's in September. Gamescom that Nintendo already announced they're gonna be at is in August does indicate, again, a direct coming, games are gonna be at Gamescom, games are gonna be at Nintendo Live 2023. Maybe I decided to go to the wrong event, maybe I should've went to PAX West instead of PAX East. <sighs> Yulia's not gonna like this, but maybe I'll be going to PAX West. Yeah, she'll like it if I bring her with, right? Right? A little, little trip out to Seattle, Redmond, wherever, I don't know. Anyways, guys, uh, you guys are awesome and amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, for being here. I am just glad to bring you the news. I'm glad to be back on camera. You guys are awesome and amazing. I want to thank you so much and I'll catch you in that next video.